Welcome to another episode of x Live, the talk show that really does get you talking on the Xandermonium Network, live from an undisclosed location. So many technical problems before we even get started. But we will get there because we are consummate professionals. Well, I am. I don't know about you. See if we can just get this uh, teleprompter working so I know who I am and where I am and what I am doing. Yes, um, I'm Xander Gibb, and uh, I'm a conservative. Get me out of here. No, I'm not. Um, on today's show, I get on my soapbox for a change. Political commentator Mark Sutherland joins us for a Brexit update. I catch up with one of the Etrad family presenters, um, Big Brother host Jeff Christian, and Jason Prince joins us with the Entertainment Roundup so much for one hour. Uh, you can have your say too. We'll be sharing your comments as usual in the live feed and you can call in if we get that far um, and let us know what you think. Uh, let me just share the um, link in the live feed. Uh, let me just share, click the share button so people know where we're at and what we're doing. Oh yes, sorry. I don't think it's sharing. But there we go, the wonders of Facebook, modern technology. So let's try this once more. We'll click the share button and click share now. And then we will go, oh, it has been shared. I will get to say hello to you all very soon. If you just give me una momento uh, while I just let people know where we are. Hello, uh, hello to everybody that is in the live feed. Uh, we will uh, endeavor in one second to get to you. Uh, where are we? Here we go. Uh, so just talk amongst yourselves for a second while I just edit this post and share the link. Uh, Cause actually on the link on the um, status I shared, shared earlier, um, it said the link will appear here and then uh, somebody forgot to do it. And I think that someone was me. Because I seem to do everything around here. So I am coming to the chat room now. Uh, so beware. I will be uh, asking questions and taking notes. Okay, so let's go back up. Hi to Janie. Hi to Chet. Welcome. Hello to Jules. Hey to Janie. Hey to Christopher. Um, hello to Dan. Hi to Jason, who's our guest later on. He's going to be doing the entertainment roundup. Hi to Robert. Hi to Martha. Hello to Dan. I can't see with my, my specs on. Hello to Robert. Hello to Sharon. Hello to Karen, who, uh, Carol even, who's saying I'm beautiful. Thank you very much. We will get your eyes tested at Specsavers. Um, hello to, I think we're caught up, David. Welcome to the show. I'm going to have to be vain and put my specs on or not be vain as it were. Um, how many out there of you um, are of a certain age now? Because I'm 35-ish, um, and I kind of need um, my glasses sometimes. Uh, there we go. I can see what's going on now. Do I look really intelligent? Um, Mark, hello, sir. Mark's going to be uh, my first guest tonight in a few minutes. Um, he will be talking to us about Brexit. So much going on uh, here about Brexit, but I don't want to get into that right now. Uh, I'm going to do that with Mark. So I'm going to get on my soapbox very quickly because uh, this week was very interesting to say the least as I awoke on Monday to find that the Westboro Bastard Church 
yes, you heard it right, had followed me on Gab. Uh, now, it was alarming, to say the least, that an anti-gay organization would follow me, but I'm reliably informed that this is now part of their MO, and I'm sure it's an intimidation tactic, but as anyone who knows me will attest, I do not intimidate easily. Now, I find myself addicted this week uh, to British quiz, quiz shows, wrong teeth in tonight, um, including 15 to 1 and Countdown, no, not the Molly Meldrum variety. Now, I have got um, so good at them, I'm thinking of going on and becoming a contestant. Uh, what do you think about that? Yes, Dan is always stalking me, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, it's become healthy um, to have interests outside of politics and current affairs, as it can tend to be draining. Um, I also have to talk to you about Facebook tonight, folks. Um, I really do try to respond to everyone who contacts me and responds to, and I try to respond to every comment um, out of respect to my fans, friends, and followers, etc. Now, it's hard when I feel a little harassed, because if I don't respond immediately, it's because I'm either not around, or I'm busy, or I'm ignoring you. Ha ha. Of course, I would never ignore anybody. Uh, also, I'm growing to hate Facebook Messenger calling. It's very impersonal, and when people I don't even know call me at 3 a.m. UK time for a chat, it's not the sunny zanny you see before you tonight. Frankly, I think it's rude and a little creepy, and not because I think I'm a big big star or a big celebrity, uh, just that it's disrespectful and the boundaries um, that one sets for oneself should not encompass this. Uh, that was me getting on my soapbox and having a bit of a rant. If you'd like to get on your soapbox, come on the show and share your views. You can go to zandragib.com forward slash contact. That's zandragib.com forward slash contact and tell us what you think. Oh yeah, you soon could be here telling us what your thoughts are. Let's go back um, for a little moment to the live feed. Uh, I won't be cutting my hair, Dan, and I'm not a hippie. Um, I am just, uh, I'm just fabulous. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Jewel says she loves hippies. Um, what else? Martha said she's been wearing glasses since she was five years old. Uh, I had something called an astigmatism when I went a few years ago, and they said, if I stop, if I wear a patch over one eye, um, then my, my other eye would improve. And I'm like, you know, when do they supply the, um, the parrot to go on the shoulder? And, you know, I already have the walking implements. Uh, hi to Dave. Uh, yes, you are absolutely right, Chet. I really do think that Dan is stalking me. We're going to have to have an intervention um, there. What else can I tell you from the live feed? Um, Dan wants me to sing a song. I'll definitely sing a song at the end. Um, I want to see 10 shares right now. I want to see 10 people sharing this live feed now, and I will sing out, and I will let you choose the song. How does that sound? Yeah, a pirate. Can you imagine it? Me as a pirate. Um, so it's going to, I'm going to bring my guest on in a minute, but I've been really angry. Uh, I don't know if you've been watching the, um, the media this week, uh, but there's been so much going on in the UK with regards to Brexit and with regards to how um, the British people are being manipulated. Um, did I hear what about Twitter, uh, Janie? Because of course you all know I'm I'm permanently suspended from Twitter, like, uh, and so are my offspring and my family and my cousins, and I don't know what I did. All I did was defend my president and share uh, how I felt politically, which I really thought that's what social media was all about. But uh, yeah, I did hear the stocks plummeted, and I'm actually glad that the stocks plummeted because I think that when you operate a social media platform and, and treat people so badly, um, you, you actually end up getting what you deserve. So I actually have no sympathy for Twitter. I hope it dies on its A double S. Oh yeah. Yeah, it is NPR. I want 10 shares of the show during the show, 10 shares of the live feed, and I will sing a song live on this show to close the show. So I'm going to, without further ado, um, start doing the introduction for my for my guests because I'm, I'm very conscious of time and I'm not a time lord. No, my president is not Nigel Farage. My president is Donald J. Trump, Dan. Um, okay, enough of this frivolity. 
Ferrarivality. I don't know what that is. Uh, so my first guest on tonight's show is a broadcaster, writer, and political commentator from the UK. Um, and I'm going to try and get him right now. Please join me in welcoming for the first time, if I can, if I can get Facebook to actually work, Mr. Mark Sutherland, who's going to be joining us on the phone any minute. Yep, that's lots of loves, but we want shares. You have to share the show. We want 10 shares, and I will, I will do my share impersonation if you get 10 shares. <clears throat> Good evening, sir. Welcome to the show. How is the world with you? It's very well, Xander. How are you, sir? I am fabulous. I'm a little cold today. I don't know what it's like where you are, but it's cold um, here in the north of England. And um, I've, um, I've I've done everything I could to stay indoors today um, uh, and not rake up leaves or, you know, get blown about. Um, but one thing that is getting blown about in this wonderful, glorious country of ours um, this week is a lot of fear-mongering with regards to um, Brexit by one um, Theresa May, who claims to be a conservative, um, but we both know is not even um, conservative light. Um, let me first of all ask you, Mark, what is your initial impression um, of the fact that Theresa May wants to put through this deal without even telling us what's in it? And from what I can get, um, from the information that I've read, um, that it's really about keeping it the same as it is, but just calling it something else. I mean, you're uh, you're, abs you're absolutely right. The, bot the bottom line is is that she is going to uh, put us into um, a tra transition hold for about 21 to 22 months. There's no negotiation in regard to uh, fishing rights, or anything or anything like that you could argue that she is maybe assigned a secret deal with tusk which means that article 50 could be extended for two years and for those people that are not sure what article 50 is article 50 is the is the article that we put in which means that we begin the process of actually leaving the eu so so we've got that going on we could also argue that maybe that uh, Mrs. May is, de is deliberately creating a construct that means that the uh, that the economy will crash, which means it's an excuse to turn around and say, right, we now have to have another referendum. Right. Uh, we have to keep extending this. It will be appalling if we leave. So, seventeen million four hundred ten thousand seven hundred fifty-two people voted out with a majority of over a million right and now it seems that the whole of um, our democratic process the mother of all parliaments as we are called is now in deep jeopardy that we will ignore the democratic decision of people on the 29th of june 2016. Absolutely. Um, I want to touch, first of all, on something that you said about the fishing rights. Now, I was rather peeved at uh, Emmanuel Macron, the um, president or prime minister, whatever he is, the, the idiot from France, demanding fishing rights um, around um, Great Britain. Uh, to me, that was just really, uh, you know, it was very emboldened um, of him. Uh, and I think that, you know, we're not even at the point where we're going to be talking about who will have what rights? Um, we're talking about a, an exit, uh, and part of that exit strategy should not be what we're giving to Europe. It's about um, what we are taking back before anything else, surely. Well, I have, absolutely. In other words, you know, we don't leave. Frankly, I don't think we need a deal at all. We should just walk away from the t from the table. Um, Mrs. May needs to read uh, President Trump's book the art of the deal she needs to examine it and in any in any negotiations you must not be afraid to actually walk away right if you were not happy with how it's going walk away and now it seems that she is creating a deal putting us into into purgatory for 21 months right. 22 months maybe maybe forever and she will put us in purgatory until there's a new re-election of the European Parliament. 
you do not leave without negotiating all the formal, all the uh, all the things that you need to negotiate on. Now, let's quickly go back in hi history, Xander. I know I've raised this on other programs, and, and I've raised this on some Facebook Lives that I've done, and you have very kindly listened to. The issue is this, is that Ted Heath, who took us in to the, to the common market, it was not the EU. In 1923, Jean Monnet and Arthur Salter created what we now have. And it was to create um, the, uh, the states of Europe, treaty by treaty, taking away the democracy of each individual country. Right. That is how it's designed. Yeah. That was never fully explained. So we surrendered our fishing rights when we joined in 1973. We began negotiating that since 61. We, nego we surrendered a food source. We surrendered the rights to our fishing rights that went all the way up to the beach beaches that was never explained we used to have wars with iceland we used to have what was called the cod wars and i remember that was never yeah absolutely that was never ever explained to the british people no now let me stop you there for a second because because i because i really want to move on i i'm very passionate about the fishing industry side of it you know because a lot of my family work in the fishing industry in the uk and and that has bottomed so badly that the fishing industry is basically non-existent so i want to talk a little bit more about that at some other time well what i want to ask you about is um i get the impression i've watched a lot of interviews lately with um both Theresa may and jeremy corbyn and um, this is a this is going to turn into a fist fight and I think there's going to be a, they're going to call for an election um, and I think that Jeremy Corbyn is going to try and get in the back door because consequently what happens in both the UK and in the United um, uh, the United States is that after a certain party has a party has been in power for an amount of time and, and they're not happy with them they just think oh well we'll give somebody else a go that's not the way forward as far as I'm concerned here because Corbyn is not the answer um, he's anti Brexit and so if he becomes prime minister he's going to take it in a totally different direction well it's very it's very interesting you say that because corbyn for all his life has been anti the common market anti the european union and the reason why and the reason i say that is that the common market morphed into the european union just to quickly say that in 2010 under the lisbon agreement that basically was the constitution of europe even though it was reframed as a treaty the important thing why i say this is that corbyn has stood against the, the progression of the European Union, which was all about political and monetary union. And the reason why he's against that is because it doesn't fit his construct of, of, of socialism. I mean, Corbyn right. is a communist. Corbyn is a communist, has been a, you know, a communist all his life. And, and the, other, the other issue is, and I don't have to explain this to you or to any of uh, the wonderful people living, uh, listening from America, is that socialism leads is the road to communism. Lenin has uh, Lenin, uh, made that extremely clear. So the issue, the other thing is as well, is that we have fixed term parliaments. We have fixed term parliaments of five years. And it's the government of the day that will will then say, right, now we're going to call an election. And Mrs. May last year stupidly decided to call an election, thinking that she was ahead in the polls. Right. And she then go, got back into power with a reduced ma majority. And what is rather interesting, she got back into power and she had to ask the Democrat the uh, the BUP, the Democratic Unionist Party, to to join her, to back her, to make sure that she had a right. majority. It's like deja vu. It's like it's like the Matrix. So as soon as I start to talk about anything that they don't like, um, they really uh, they really have a problem with it. Let me just uh, share this feed, and um, I will then uh, try to bring on um, my next guest. Oh, gosh, the wonders of, of live, uh, the wonders of live broadcasting. But we'll get there. We really will. We really will, even. And this is before I have a drink. Okay, <laughs> just getting the uh, cue prompter to catch up. You see, I'm a consummate professional. And if you're watching Channel 4, I am available for daytime television. We're getting there. All right. So, my next guest... Um, is no stranger to this show. Notice I'm waffling just a little bit. 
No, yeah, we're playing a drinking game. Every time I say, er, um, uh, you can take a shot of whiskey or whatever is your tipple. Um, so, Jeff Christian is a writer, singer, actor, broadcaster, star of Big Brother and many a TV show and film. He also breaks the airways as my co-host on The x Red Show and is now diversifying into retail. We will find out more about that if we can get him um, on live. If we can actually uh, do that without losing the live feed. Um, or without my house blowing up. So uh, let's just see if we can bring him on. Please share the live feed, folks, um, so that people know where we are. Hello, is this Pizza World? <laughs> Zonda, how are you? I am fabulous, Jeff. Welcome back to the show. Apologies um, for the lateness in bringing you on. We've had technical problems here. You see, every time oh, we... Okay. Every time uh, we I'm say... Gonna, I'm, only, I'm only sitting here picking my toes. It's fine, just... <laughs> really? I, I, you, you should get your partner to do that because then, then it's it's much less messy. Yeah, anytime we mention <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn in a... In a, in a bad way, um, Facebook actually switches us off. Um, so we have to say nice things about Jeremy Corbyn now so we get to stay in the oh, live right. feed. Um, but welcome back to the show, Jeff. Now, I was trying to think today, how long is it since you worked on the show? And it was at the same time you were doing Xandermonium TV. I estimate it was about 2016. Thereabouts, yes, I think it was. Through 2016, we did about uh, nine months together, I think, didn't we? We did, uh, yeah. And then you went into therapy, time, didn't we? you? Yeah. <laughs> we could have had a baby in that time. Well, that's, we'll save that topic for a different show, I think. But yes, <laughs> um, we probably could have done. Now, you've done, before we go forward, I want to just kind of go backward because a couple of people have said, because um, obviously um, we've put some advertising out there. People want to know about Big Brother. They want to know about what you did in Big Brother, um, who you were, uh, when it was. Let's, let's start there. Tell people a little bit about that. Um, well, I was employed by uh, Endemol, the production company, to do um, a stint on Big Brother as uh, the official title was Big Brother Singing Drag Queen. So I worked on Big Brother's bit on the side. And uh, if you think about the studios we were filming at in Elstree in London, uh, the Big Brother house itself was just um, uh, a few hundred yards away from the studio that we were filming in. So as people were ejected from the Big Brother house, they would come immediately down into our studio right. to be interviewed and grilled and, and, you know, interrogated, as it were. And it was my job to sing them into the studio as they were introduced uh, with a song that was picked appropriately to the kind of behaviour, good or bad, that they'd been up to, that the nation had been watching in the house while they were in there. Right. Um, and then, of course, uh, I had to sort of, you know, speak to them and, you know, make some niceties to relax them, because the first thing they see of course when they come out a drag queen oh my god you know and then the idea was that i relax them and then they think oh okay the defenses are down and then of course the uh, they were grilled by the panel and the audience and the host um so that was kind of my job i did three seasons of it which was great great fun hard work because it was live uh, and obviously um i know there's a bit of a myth that some people say that big brother is pre-planned and you know in advance who's going to be evicted but we really didn't so when we used to go into rehearsals at lunchtime of the day, we were really there that long till the broadcast sort of about 11 and 12. Um, we had to rehearse every possible scenario and outcome. So often you'd, you'd have noticed if you were watching that sometimes there were up to six or nine nominations um, of people to be evicted. So in those cases, so you had to I learn had to nine learn songs, six songs, you know, we had wow. to be ready for everybody, six pieces of script, six songs six rehearsals and run-throughs and so wow. it, was quite a, it was a long job you know you were there for the whole day um until very late at night but it was great great fun really great fun so what what kind of um because because you 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 were on the celebrity big brother that's right isn't it i did uh, i did a civilian one uh which was um about 13 or 14 weeks i think right and then i did two two celebrity series as well um and i was supposed to be running until I finished in January 2013, can you believe? Well, that's five, over five years ago now. 
um, and it was supposed to run until the end of 2014, which would have been another three series. But um, there was a new controller at Channel 5 that changed things around and swapped. Was he a fat controller? <laughs> I don't know. I remember That's an end joke. Him, but I don't know if he was fat or... No, he actually came, um, uh, he came in to see my show in, in the West End of London in Soho, which I was still doing at the time. Right. Um, and um, I think one of the other producers who wanted me to stay on the show brought him in with a view to perhaps getting me back on again. And uh, although he said he really enjoyed the show, um, I didn't get invited back. But um, but that was the only chance that I actually had to meet him. <laughs> right. But he was a nice enough guy, but he just you know needed to, to give it a fresh... A clean sweep, as they say, and right. move things forward, and uh, and that's how you know that's how the business works. So it absolutely does. Let me ask you this, because I think people tend to, in life, want to put you in a box. Uh, I mean, a lot of people literally want to put me in a box. Um, but as a, as a performer, um, you know, people want to categorize you as either an actor or a singer or, or whatever you're doing, broadcasting, um, presenting. Um, don't you find it confuses people when you do more than one thing? Um, it confuses me about other people. Right. <laughs> It, it can it can do, but I think um, you know if you if you work as an underground artist as I do, and you're responsible for your own income, you kind of have to take the work where you can get it. And I you think that that although nowadays I'm lucky enough to be a bit more choosy, certainly earlier on at the beginning, um, you have to be good at stuff. You have to learn the trade very quickly, whether it's writing or, or, or songwriting or performing. Um, I mean, when I when I started in, in working as a female impersonator in drag, it, it wasn't really something I wanted to do. And no. As, as hard as it might seem for people to believe, I had a real lot of trouble getting my head around the idea of dressing like a girl. Um, but of course, then somebody explains to me, well, actually, you're wearing a costume like yeah. you know, or Boy George, it's not really. And by the time I kind of got my head around that, it was really just drawing on my performing experience from the decade before singing with the live bands and evolving it into something else. So I think the typecasting was the biggest problem for me with doing drag because it, it, everything that I was getting from everywhere and all my agents and everybody, it was all drag this, drag that. And right. I don't mind that, I really don't. But uh, I needed to kind of step back a little bit um, and work on some other stuff and remind people, well, actually, my main job is so, as a songwriter that's what that's always been my job you know for right. a very long time um and you know whatever else comes up if i like the idea of the project then then why not you know as long as people want me to work with them then i'm i'm very happy to do so if it's a, a project that i like the look of and that i think i'll go enjoy absolutely i think it's important to be versatile because uh because there are so many um, there are so many different types of uh, gigs in the entertainment world. I mean, you know, you and I came up through the grassroots um, method, and yes. we and we've done everything from pubs to clubs to theater to you know, you yeah. name it, we've done it. Um, but I think that sometimes that is. Well, certainly it was for me, you know, whilst we both had some formal training too, um, actually getting out there and doing it. Is, would you not say that that's a, um, a better way to hone your craft? Absolutely. I don't think there's certain things that you can't learn um, in, a, in a school classroom or a college or a university. Right. Some of it, it's like life. Some of it, you've just got to get out there and you've got to do it. You know, if you're a kid, your parents teach you as, and guide you as best as they can for what they think you're going to be facing, but it's not until you actually get out there and do it that you really begin to learn for yourself. And I think that nothing really counts for experience. No. Because the other thing is, I think with you talking about being a jack of all trades or working in lots of different areas within the same industry, I think that you have to you have to, to be able to evolve on your own experience and become who you become. So if you think of a, of a big movie star, say someone like George Clooney, or Xander Gibb. For example, or, or, um, or Xander Gibb, of course, mm. Judy Dench, you know, Maggie Smith. Uh, <laughs> Dame the Xander actor, Gibb. The actor or the artist that you know now has evolved and, and of they've become very used to their own skin and their right. own abilities. They know what their limitations are. And, and, and you only get that by, by going through it and experiencing it and working it. Um, and, I, and so now oh, I find myself some years later, some considerable years later, pretty comfortable 
with my with what I do because I know what limit, my limitations are. I know what I can do, what I can't do, what I'd like to do, what I wouldn't like right. to do. Um, and it means that you can you can make better decisions about what work you take on. But it also means that you can you can gradually you know, recommend yourself in a different way. Um, but I think it's all a natural course, you know, a, a couple of the films that I was working on, I've been working on in the last couple of years are with the director, James Crow, uh, a couple of horror films. Um, one of them is a Christmas one called Nightmare on 34th Street. A Christmas um, horror and, film? And, uh, sorry? A Christmas horror film? A Christmas horror film, Wow. Yes. And it's a really, it's a really scary film as well. I've seen some of the rushes and the trailer and such. If there is a trailer, actually, you can look the trailer up on YouTube, Nightmare on 34th Street, James Cry. Um, but we've been working with a lot of younger people, uh, like very young people, you know, from the age of about uh, 10, and, uh, 12 and some young teenagers. Um, and to watch them, and they're, they're very talented and they're very clued up about what they want to do. But you, you just know, you, you can look at them and you can say, I really want to see what you're in 20 years time if i'm still alive you know right. because you, you can you know that they're going to grow into it and they're going to evolve and if they're that interested and focused now you can imagine what they're going to be like when they're in their 30s and absolutely or, 40s or yeah do you so want it's, it's kind of fascinating to watch other people now do it you know from from my point of view absolutely do you do you kind of forget uh, i don't know about you but when i get asked to do something again i kind of forget um that i'm good at something um so you know recently i've been asked about I can't talk a lot about it, but but for an acting role, um, and, and when I was first approached about it, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot I'm an actor too. Do you <laughs> find that when you do so many things, like, because, you know, I know you were a singer, you know, when I first met you, you were a singer, and uh, among other things, but do, do you find that you almost kind of forget that, oh yes, that's something that I do as well? In a, in a way, yeah, in a way. I think um, you, you kind of have to get back in the swing of it again. I mean, it is a bit, it's a bit like the riding a bike, you know, you, you get back on the bike and then you just cycle. But um, I do kind of notice it sometimes, I, there'll be a, be a phase where I go through, it could be two, three, five years of doing one particular thing, um, and then go back to something that I haven't done for a while. And I find that I, I um, although I've been involved in, in music a lot generally, going along i find that every time i go back to do a new studio album a jeff christian studio album which tends to happen sort of every sort of eight to ten years or so um it takes me a little while to think about getting back in the swing of it again right um and of course every time i, I do it uh, uh, every time i've done one um the technology has evolved again so you kind of it's, oh, it's gosh, almost like a new, a new job in a way you know the right. technical stuff but but i think it's 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 nice because in between those gaps where you shift from one job to another, whatever, whether it's writing a book or an article or whether it's uh, writing a song or recording or producing for somebody else uh, or acting indeed or, or cabaret, I, I think that the, the gaps in between, you, I've also found that I evolve as a person and my experiences in other fields can add and add flavour and colour to, to what I'm going back to from before. So. I think it's a natural artistic progression in that you're always seeking perfection, but you never quite get there, whoever you are. Absolutely. However talented you are. And it's all part of the of the journey, which is kind of the point, I think. The, the journey is as important as the... Absolutely. The destination. The results. I'm not, I'm not sure that that's yeah. a bad thing, though, because I think we should always be striving to better ourselves, and no matter how good our skills are. I want to diversify just a little bit, which is a great yeah. segue, because because I I read recently um, that that Jeff Christian has gone into retail. So you know, I rushed to my <laughs> local pound store, which is a dollar store, <laughs> uh, the same as a dollar store in England, and I couldn't find you anywhere. But 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 it's like you you started an internet retail outlet. Don't, Tell us. Yeah, don't look don't knock pound store. It's no. A very, very, very valuable asset. Yes, I absolutely. Um, not knocking uh, yeah. pound stores, so don't be ban banning me from the local ones, okay? <laughs> um, well, we uh, we launched a, a store called Pink Fantastic, which is a British store. It's at pinkfantastic.co.uk. And it kind of evolved from a photo shoot because we were trying to find certain things for a certain project that, that's yet to be shown it, it's a, I, i'm not going to say a lot about it but we were trying to find 
some particular types of clothing, T-shirts and, and emblems on T-shirts. And we really just couldn't find what we were looking for. We just couldn't find it anywhere on the internet or anywhere at all. And so um, the obvious thing to do was to get them done ourselves, to get them made up ourselves. And I think this kind of evolved into this deep an idea of, well, actually, you know, if we can't get this stuff, it would be really nice to have somewhere right. that there may be other people that are looking for this kind of stuff, you know, and um, and it evolved from there and then the range expanded and such and uh, and became this company, uh, Pink Fantastic, um, which um, is a kind of LGBT friendly um, site for clothing, homewares, kitchenware, um, jewellery and such and accessories um, and it's just a camp little business like a little sideline that kind of bubbles along on the side a couple of people oversee it and make sure everything's running properly and that it's uh, technical and it's secure of course because right. you, if people are this you know using their credit cards and such uh, debit cards um, and um, that's kind of where it came from and, and I wasn't sure you know there's a few stop and starts but now that it's up and running and it's doing okay and people are interacting and getting involved in social media as well um, it's kind of fun. It's a nice thing to see happening, to see evolve. Absolutely. I've looked at the website uh, and it's very kitschy, but you told me there was a Xander Gibb toilet seat and I couldn't find that. <laughs> Where, whereabouts is that located on the website? It's on, it's in the restricted area. Oh, right. So is there a, is there like a, is there like a kind of club page, you know, for, for just those in the know? <laughs> it should be. You see, just when I just when I think I can take that one off the list and move on, you see, you've got my brain working on it again. Now. Yeah, as I'm yeah. in the toilet seat, I like it. I do. I would buy. I would buy a <laughs> Theresa May toilet seat right now. I tell you, but let's but let's Actually, not get too it's, political. Yeah, it's, no, it's, um, it's, it's you're not the first person that's mentioned that. But as like you say, let's um, we we'll leave it there. So, we, <laughs> so, so I, I I already kind of intonated that it's kind of kitschy because you've got, you know, um. Things like um, pictures of, of uh, you know, 50s movie stars and, you know, just a whole plethora uh, of things and, and, and ideal gifts for Christmas, right? Yeah, I, I think it is. I mean, the, the, sort of, uh, the, the sort of things that I would want to buy for people because, um, I mean, it's, you know, pu publicly I'm, I'm known in a certain way. But, of course, my family see me that way as well and my friends. And so right. those are the sorts of things that I buy for people for Christmas. They really are, and for birthdays right. and, and such. And um, that's why we tried to do a really good range because we thought, well, you know, in some respects it's simple to say, OK, let's just have a, a shop that does T-shirts. But not everybody wants a T-shirt, and no. you know, as we we got asked quite early on, you know, that T-shirt design, you know, can I get that on a mug? Um, and we thought, well, yeah, let's do some a range of ceramic mugs, and it, so it kind of evolved from this little idea about just one simple photo shoot. I want to wear this, and I can't find where to get it from. Um, and I think now that it's quite a nice little camp place to go, that just kind of sits there. Um, ready for anybody that wants to, to buy gifts for themselves or for other people. Of course, next year we start the whole um, uh, gay and LGBTQ pride season again. Um, there's going to be dozens of them up and down the country in the UK and across America, of course, right. and Australia. And uh, we've, got a, we've got a load of stuff that people can wear. Well, um, you know, the, uh, the premise behind it was that um, you kind of, it's a bit like having your own personal drag queen shopper. You don't have to say I wouldn't know what that just, was all you about. You can just wear it. You don't have to say it. You don't have to think up fancy right. things. Just wear what, you, wear what you mean to say. And um, that's the idea behind it. I'm a bit, <laughs> uh, you know, like people are bored with Brexit. There's this like hashtag B.O.B. I'm yeah. a bit B.O.P. <laughs> right now. I'm a bit bored of pride. I think it needs to, I think it needs to evolve somewhat. Um, and I'm all for it being a celebration and, and, and all of these things, but I'd like it to be more of a celebration than, than just a political statement. Can it be both? Yeah. Um, I think that the political statements are still important right. uh, because I think that I think there's still a long way to go. And I mean, we've only got to look at the evolution in certain parts of the world. It, it kind of almost feels as though LGBTQ rights are going backwards in a way. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's still a lot of countries where it isn't legal to be gay. So I don't think I think we're a long way off everybody 
being accepted for who they are right. equally. You know, whether it's gay people, uh, lesbians, transgender people, women, you know, uh, people from different nationalities. Oh, we don't have women colors. on... No, we don't. Exactly. Not so on think, this show. I think that the politics is still important. However, I think that you need to be able to keep it in its place. Right. So I, I think, Balance. you know, pride in itself, any pride event anywhere, however big or small, um, is, is, is an important political statement in itself. You don't need to make the event about politics as well. I think the event is about having a good time, celebrating who you are, meeting all your friends, meeting new people. Um, uh, it doesn't need to be the politics, but the event itself is political enough a statement without absolutely. there having to be politics through it as absolutely. well. Absolutely. We, we are out of time. I hope you'll come back very soon and we can uh, talk some more because I feel we've we've barely um, scratched the surface. And I miss you, Jeff. We used to get together twice a week, even though you don't know who I, I am. I miss you too. Who? I miss who? you too. I've, um, <laughs> I've had a great time. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Zana, for it's asking me. It's been really nice to It's been lovely to again. talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. Tell people where they can find you and tell people where they can um, also look at your a uh, new website too okay well my personal website is jeffchristian.com uh that's jeff with a j christian with a k jeffchristian.com everything that i do is on there uh, and the business itself uh, pink fantastic is at pinkfantastic.co.uk uh, shipping to anywhere in the world so anybody can, can go and take a look and i hope you enjoy your stay brilliant Listen, thank you uh, so much, Jeff. Um, give my best to Charlie. Uh, have a fabulous weekend, and we will definitely have you on again soon um, to talk more. Because I know you've got some, uh, you've got some big announcements to make. He's not pregnant, Ooh. don't worry, but he does have some <laughs> announcements to make, and we will have him back to talk about those. Um, but for now, please join me in saying thank you for the, to the one, the only, the fabulous, the inimitable. inimitable you see, I can't even say the word. The inimitable <laughs> Mr. Jeff Christian. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Jake, take care. Thank you, Zanda. Thank you very much. Bye. That was Jeff Christian. Um, all of his contact information, uh, not his home address, um, but everything else is on the X-Rad show page for uh, today. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring on our entertainment correspondent, um, Jason Prince, who is a, a writer, a singer, uh, a producer, a TV presenter, you name it. He does it, and he's also one of uh, the Xander Money and family. Um, so without further ado, I am going to bring him on. Where are we? Let's give him a call. Should we order Chinese takeout this time, or what should we order? Let's see uh, how we can surprise Mr. Jason Prince, who should be joining me any moment now. And, uh, Good evening, Mr. Prince. How is the world with you? Oh, uh, what an introduction. Nobody introduces me like you. Absolutely. Well, it's great <laughs> to have you back. It seems like an eternity uh, since we have spoken. It um, does seem like an eternity because, of course, when we was in the States, like, every week, wasn't it, for, for quite a few months, we had our weekly catch-up, didn't we? Of, um, of what was going on. Like, we did indeed. With you and with me and with everybody. We've got like this whole list and back catalogue of friends for like 20 or 30 oh, years that, gosh. We both, that we both like to have a good gossip about once. So we've got some gossip to catch up on now. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll have to, uh, after we've talked about some entertainment stuff, we'll have to talk about Kelly and who she's dating and uh, <laughs> all of that. Um, I know you're listening, Kelly. We love you really, darling. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think she might be dating me, Zander. Really? Think. Yeah, I hope you're well, not... I don't know if it's an exclusive. Yeah, I hope you're not trying for a baby, though, because, you know... <laughs> I can well, just imagine... Trying, I can't conceive at the moment, but I do have the waistline for someone that's about six months gone. Let's not go there. But let's jump right <laughs> into our first, um, our first topic. <laughs> um, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Now, this year's I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here has been sedate to say the least. The arduous trials, eating pig snouts and butts and fish eyes and dead flies, Noel Edmonds entering the campus, Caesar, um, the governors from the chase, Anne Hegarty showing her true colors. Um, she was cheered on by the viewers at home on Tuesday as she completed um, the gruesome Bush, Bush Tucker trial. 
that a six-year-old was sporting her personalized I'm a Celebrity T-shirt t -shirt with her name and phone number printed on her chest rather than around the back like everybody else. Now, many were quick to comment on this on Twitter with one person writing smart thinking from Anne, um, top uh, better coverage, while another said Anne wearing a t-shirt backwards is honestly a look and is iconic. So, <laughs> I love Anne Hegarty and I love oh her. Oh my god, you know like, every year when I'm a celebrity there is always one person that just absolutely stands out. Whoever right. would thought a couple of weeks ago there would be Anne. N not I mean, me. just, everybody's in love with her in the camp every time that they get every time that they win extra stars and they get an extra meal or an extra bed or like one of their possessions they just all can't wait to give it to Anne, can they she's no. like miss popular of the of the jungle the most popular person i've ever seen in there what do you think absolutely and and i like that she's very open and honest about the fact that she's she's autistic um yes and i do like some of the comments that have gone, gone up on social media about it and i think she's uh obviously there's different there's different types of autism and there's different levels of autism. Right. There's and I think spectrum. that this whole experience for her in the jungle has been an absolute life changing experience. And I think us as the viewer have been taken on a journey. Can I just quickly give uh, an exclusive about um, I'm a Celebrity? Because I've just heard you of my mother indeed. who was watching it this evening. And Noel Edmonds is the first person voted out. There you go. You heard it on here live on x -Rad Live. But Noel yeah, Edmonds is the out. first one. Now, for those of you who don't know, in the States who don't know who Noel Edmonds is, don't worry. Um, <laughs> but I love Noel. I grew up with Noel Edmonds, and I thought I did like Noel Edmonds. Daddy but I didn't shop. like him in this. No. Sadie Swap Shop, we yeah. remember. And of course, he's, uh, he obviously became um, much more famous than being the, the uh, housemate of Mr. Blobby, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah. Well, and that, and they're not it. referring to me before you ask. <laughs> Thank you very much. I tell you what, though, I think Mr. Blobby might have lasted more than the first round in I'm a Celebrity. I, think I do, too. Blobby Prime a Celebrity. Blobby Prime a Celebrity. Now, let me ask you, Jason, if they asked you to do I'm a Celebrity, number no. one, would you do it? <laughs> and number two, would you would you eat, like, pig snouts and, and a no, milkshake no, made of frog no. spawn? You know the and... bit where they come into the camp and that they have to jump out of the helicopter? Uh, I would be the earliest celebrity to say, I'm a celebrity, get me out of it. I wouldn't yeah. be able to get into the camp, jumping, just doing any any of the above. I don't like spiders, I don't like creepy crawlies, I wouldn't be able to sleep outside like no. that. I wouldn't be able to eat those things. Plus, just the sheer fact that my appetite, yeah, if I was living on rice and beans, oh my God, I would just like, my appetite, which is just so huge compared to everybody else, I'd just be constantly in a bad mood and having fights. I would just be fighting for England. Cordies, cetera, really? I, think, I would hate it. It would be like hell for me. You know that bird that sounds like, uh, the bird that's always in the background that sounds like a car alarm? I would be, I would be like <laughs> farting constantly living on rice and beans. <laughs> All I night long. I tell you what I would be doing. I'd be, one thing I would teach myself, if you've got to go and let rats and spiders and everything fall on you, you might as well learn how to hunt. No. I'd go out there hunting. I'd find myself oh, a I couldn't stand that. I cringed at some of the scenes where they had snakes. I mean, I don't like snakes and I don't like spiders. I mean, if a spider came on the set now and was near me, you know, the show would be over. Uh, so I, I can't imagine what it would be like. Spiders, in the jungle. like, and anytime, anytime I'm abroad, the size of the spiders, if one just happens to be in my bedroom, that's it. I cannot sleep. So forget <laughs> sleeping when most of your neighbors are spiders. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, I, I think... Um, I do, I do kind of, I did watch more of, of, of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here this time. I watched um, more of it this time because of Anne. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think that that's been the reason um, I, I have watched it. But would I go on it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. With a capital <laughs> N for no. So I want to move on. Um, now, Netflix have been a little bit controversial. Um, yeah. They, um, they want to... Um, put our former uh, excuse for President Barack Hussein Obama and his husband, I mean his wife, Michelle, um, <laughs> uh, on, um, the, on Netflix with a show called My Two Dads, 
No, I'm joking. I'm a comedian. Uh, now, the deal will give Bathhouse Barry an international television platform, allowing him to spew his hate and continue deep state tactics. Now, the couple has created Higher Ground Productions, which I think is a hilarious name for a production company, with all the crap that they've been involved in, to produce um, Baza and Shelley. And he said that he does not intend to use his new platform to wage a public campaign against his successor in the Oval Office or to fight against conservative voices that popular media outlets like Fox News um, but might already be threatening to leave. Now there is already this backlash uh, that people are talking about um, boycotting Netflix. You, you remember last year uh, that um, they did it for Kathy Griffin and several other people um, that have been outspoken. Now I'm getting tired of this crossover with regards to our politics and our entertainment, uh, but we do vote with our feet, don't we, Jason? Well, I mean, I just can't believe that Obama is considering doing a reality show. Is that what it is? Is it? Yeah, a yeah. It's kind I of just, like I it's like the Os it. the Black Osbournes, basically. It's like the Osbournes but black. I just absolutely can't believe it. Although, of course, President Trump, we all know, is uh, was a TV star before he was a politician, and some may argue that he's still is that right. you know something obvious it is and i suppose you know all the way all the way i mean you know in the 80s because we had reagan didn't we it was a it was an actor we even yeah. had gorbachev on the other side the whole war was run by two two actors yeah so you know i mean on on the surface of things on the surface of things then um then yes you you know it's up to him what he does now if he's uh, if he's not going to be running the white house you know, on the surface things it's him. But I guess this isn't the real reason that he's doing no. it with you know I mean? So I mean the thing is 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 it's got to the point now, I think, here and in America, where just like anything goes according to like there's no you know, it's like all spare in love, war and, and politics, politics, I oh, guess. Absolutely. And, and the fact that President Trump won the election was was largely due to the fact that he was such a celebrity already. So, you know, who's to say that they're thinking, oh, um, you know, this is our way, you know, back to the White House, or at least the way for our, for our, um, you know, our political group and our political followers to be to be back in power. So, I don't suppose you can blame them, but it's certainly, I'm certainly shocked. I'm absolutely shocked when I saw your little notes come through earlier that this that this might be the point of conversation. I just couldn't believe it. And when you said that part of it was a joke, I thought you meant the whole thing was a joke. I just No, no. I, meant... I just cannot believe that this is even something that is being contemplated and discussed. Right, it's exactly. It's but it's hilarious, I'm sorry. Exactly. I mean, I was, where I said, I'm, I'm joking, you know, I was referring to the fact that, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> yeah, my two dads, a lot of people suggest that Michelle Obama was born a man. And I mean, I don't care if she was, you know, God bless him, uh, her, I mean, sorry, because we have, we have to be correct with our vernacular. Um, but, but what I do object to is, you know, when you've, le when you've left political office, you should not be undermining um, those that are in office right now. And just to go back to something I we said think about... there are any rules anymore. The, the no, year, it's the, 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 all the lines have been blurred. There are any rules anymore. Absolutely. You know, and, and just to go back to what you said about the fact that Donald Trump was a TV star before he was uh, the president, he absolutely was. And I hated him. Um, he, he actually played his part so well that he made people hate him. Um, <laughs> and he played it a little too well. Um, but, but it takes an educated person to see beyond that and to see yeah. that that's a role that, that, that the guy was actually playing. So I won't it be could watching... Be argued that, that, that in this level of politics, it could be argued that the president or the front man, that is also a role. It could be argued. It could. It could, be it could absolutely. Because a lot of politics now does seem very much... A little bit too close to showbiz, if you ask. Yeah, me. well, well, I don't know who it was that said it's in a Madonna song too. It says all the world is a stage, and even politicians I don't, I don't are playing a part. Make a very good glamour model, though. What do you think? Who, <laughs> Michelle Obama? No, she'd have to shave her legs twice a day, and that would not work. Now, I want to, because um, we're a little bit time bound, we will go a little bit over. Um, but I want to talk about the new movie uh, with Lady Gaga. Uh, called A Star Is Born. Now, I believe you've been to see that. Now, don't I give have. too much away, but just give us a little bit of a breakdown and tell us what you thought of it. Well, first of all, anyone that isn't like, well, 
so I'm, I'm like a Gaga fan-esque, I guess, but because of my love for Madonna, you know, Madonna's always the queen, and I, I suppose, you know, the Gaga's always been the princess, I, until I saw this film, and then I suddenly thought, crikey, She's amazing. Gaga's acting in it is fantastic. I love the way she looks without all her Gaga makeup, without yeah. that trend type makeup. Just like a She's Stephanie. She's a very attractive woman, which I'd never noticed before because I'd always seen her more like a drag queen, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, acting, you know, against great actors like Bradley Cooper, you know, who plays right. her, her husband, who's this absolutely, um, you know, sensational rock and roll star of, of, uh, of yesteryear, who obviously has gone down that whole rock and roll road of drinks and drugs and rehab and all the rest of it. And meanwhile, Lady Gaga plays a young girl that's influenced by him, that's helped to the top with his with his connections, let's say, but not without her own talent. Right. And, um, and it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's an old fashioned love story, to be quite honest. It's the old fashioned Hollywood loves doing, loves making stories about itself. It's the old fashioned, you know, a star is born literally an old star. And, and it's an old fashioned thing about loyalty really, because, um, funnily enough, through it all, Gaga's character is very loyal to her old man which is something you don't see very often, you know, in, in Hollywood now, someone maybe gets married, maybe, dare we say, for their career, and then manages to lose their spouse a couple of years later. And um, that's the, without giving too much away about don't it. Don't spoil the plot, but, dude, because I haven't seen it yet. No, I won't say any more than that, but she's very loyal, let's put it that so way. So let me ask you, what uh, was your, because obviously it's a musical film, what was yeah. your favorite song uh, from the movie? I like the song, I don't know what it's called, but they sing a duet together. Yeah, and it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And he, 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 in one of the early scenes, which I can tell you about, when she's kind of a groupie girlfriend, he, he brings her from the wings and they sing a duet together, which she has written. And right. he's got the band to learn. It's very romantic. You Are know, you talking the about the song Shallow? I don't know. Is what to Does it go? Uh, is it called Shallow? Are you talking about... Tell me something, boy. Yes, I Are think you so. trying to hide it to that boy? Yeah. I'm just funnily I mean, enough. The whole of the soundtrack is just breathtaking anyway, because Gaga's voice right. is just amazing. amazing. I'm actually just learning that song for a TV show that I'm doing next year. Ah. And it really, um, my one of my girlfriends in America uh, uh, called me and said, Zan, you really have to uh, listen to this song called Shallow. Yeah. Um, and I just, I cried the first time I heard oh, it. Oh, you, you've got to go and see the film now because you're a big softy like me and I you will cry. Take my box of Kleenex with me just to, <laughs> to be safe. So out of <laughs> 10, what would you one, right? give it? <laughs> Say that again, sorry. Why well, are you taking the Kleenex for Bradley Cooper? Be good, be good because we're <laughs> live. Uh, so out of 10, how many points uh, would you give it? It's a big nine from me, a right. big nine, and I don't go to the movies very often, but that one was well worth going to see, and it brought a tear even to my eye. So tell me, do you think um, um, Gaga's acting is as good as her singing? Because you know, quite often, I like think you know, singing is the Barbara main Streisand thing. when she when she started acting, she was she was quite a good actress. Uh, you know, I don't really uh, like her politics very much, but she's a pretty good actress. But a lot of singers that take up acting are not that good at it. No, I mean, you know, I think I was pleasantly surprised by her acting. I mean, I, I'd be interested to see her playing a different sort of role. I mean, obviously she was playing a famous singer, so she's obviously got a lot of, uh, you know, herself in the, in the character. Um, and so it's hard to tell, isn't it, when they're playing sort of a similar role to themselves, as in Whitney in The Bodyguard was just amazing. Like, they couldn't have, they couldn't have cast anything better. And I don't think they could have cast anybody better than Gaga in this remake of A Star Is Born. Absolutely. Well, they did ask me to do it, but, you know, I, I wasn't free uh, on, <laughs> on the dates on the dates that they were referring to. Um, but yeah, I definitely think I have to see the movie um, and, and I'm glad um, that you recommend it. Now, Jason, uh, we're coming to the end of our time together. Tell people where they can find you uh, and where they okay. can find more on about what internet, you're doing. On the internet, they can, uh, they on can the internet? my website. JasonPrinceOfficial.com is my latest. Oh, uh, you have a new Facebook. website. I'll have to check that out. 
it's a nice website. Thank you to Martin at Anxi and uh, Club Kids. And, and we've got a, a, an updated Club Kids Productions website as well, which is clubkidsproductions.co.uk. And that's Club Kids spelled K-L-U-B-K-I-D-Z. Absolutely. So make sure you check Jason out. Jason will be back with us in a couple of weeks uh, to talk about more uh, entertainment uh, gossip. But for now, thank you so much, Jason. And you're, are you? Um, yeah, are you, it's been great to be back. Aren't you DJing tomorrow night? I'm DJing Sunday night and every Sunday night. Jason Stewart my own night of fire in Vauxhall. So whatever Sunday, if you're in London or if any of our listeners are in London, come join me on a Sunday night of fire in Vauxhall, Jason Street Box. Absolutely. Next time in London, I will make sure to uh, come and check you out. But for now, thank you so much, Mr. Jason Prince. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks a lot, Jason. Take care. Bye. 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 That was Jason Prince. Make sure you check him out. All of his contact information is on the XRAD show page for today. I'm so sorry for all the technical problems. Blame that bloody Mr. Zuckerberg at Facebook. Uh, that's all for today's show. Thanks to everyone who's taken part. Thanks to Mark Sutherland. Thanks to Jeff Christian and Jason Prince. And thanks to you for watching. Uh, not had your fill of the Gibster. You can catch me on the real side later at 6 Pacific, 8 Central, 9 Eastern, and 2 a.m. back in the UK. I'll be back next Friday. Hopefully, we'll have less uh, technical problems next time. Uh, stay safe, stay warm, and I really do love you all. Bye-bye.